kind of the mining? Oh, on the, uh, well, mining's there are actually a number, a, a number of different, you know, again, uh, occupations uh, that will benefit tremendously from having multiple players and or MPCs, you know, working in tandem together. Uh, so to use mining, you know, as an example, um, mining is not a mi mi mining is not an occupation that's completely safe. Uh, these big asteroids that you're going to be, you know, injecting, you know, uh, megawatts of energy into, um, they contain volatile materials. They contain, you know, compressed gases. Um, there, there are a number of ways by which you can wind up, you know, blowing these things apart as opposed to just extracting the valuable materials that you actually want to get. And so the first thing when you actually uh, go into an asteroid field that you'd wind up doing is you'd have a dedicated uh, scanning operator and his entire uh, purpose is to basically help you figure out in this vast field of thousands of asteroids which ones have a component, you know, constitution that's attractive given what you're actually after, given what the prices in that system, you know, uh, warrant you spending your time trying to extract. Um, so you've got a scanning operator, you've obviously got the beam operators which are going to be the guys on the ship that are actually directing these mining lasers that are injecting, you know, these uh, uh, you know, in, injecting these beams of energy uh, into into these asteroids in order to uh, extract uh, fragments that a that a cargo loading operator would then seek to maneuver within the ship. And the way by which this works for the cargo operator is he's basically got a tr repulsor and a tractor be and uh, a tractor beams. Uh, a tractor as opposed to tractor. They're, they're actually a little bit different um, in, in regards to how we use them within the game. Uh, so the repulsor beam obviously just pushes something away and a tractor beam uh, just pulls it towards you. And so if you kind of picture looking out through your cargo hold towards an asteroid, um, which would be the point of view of your cargo loading operator, he would see each of these fragments as they're being, you know, blasted off, and all that he's essentially doing is, based upon, you know, the, you know, the constitution of each little fragment, is he's applying a little force to basically try to maneuver it into your cargo hold or to push it away. Um, the beam operators actually have uh, qu quite a bit of work to do in regards to monitoring um, what's going on so that the situation doesn't get too out of control. We've got a, an exothermic reaction detector that monitors the amount of energy that's being produced and what that's essentially doing is it's giving you a visual indication of whether or not the amount of energy that you'd expect to see based upon the beam that you're uh, injecting into the asteroid the, uh, is is larger than what you'd expect. And what that would signal is that you've, you're actually starting to generate chain reactions with some of the with some of these materials. And that becomes very dangerous because if you've got something of sufficient, you know, that's sufficiently volatile and has, you know, a sufficient explosive force and you actually ignite a chunk of it, again, it's like you can blow this asteroid apart. And so you're constantly monitoring how much, you know, excess energy is being produced, you're also monitoring uh, seismic activity. Seismic activity is very important in regards to mining these asteroids because some of these materials, kind of like nitroglycerin, it's like they're not necessarily sensitive to the injection of, uh, of energy so much as vibration. And so there can be materials on the complete opposite side of an asteroid. And if you're basically shaking, if you're breaking apart, if you're, if you're breaking fragments, of sufficient size, you're called, causing little micro tremors to emanate back and forth through these asteroids. And so the the you know the, the the point is that the mining beam operators are monitoring the beams that are being injected to ensure that you're not going to blow the thing apart. The pilot is constantly rotating around the asteroid to find optimal locations. The scanning beam operator is basically identifying which asteroids are most attractive. The attractor repulsor, you know, the cargo loading operator, he's basically maneuvering this stuff into your ship. You've got a refinery operator that's basically in charge of the mechanics that allow uh, unrefined ore to be uh, converted into pure materials that you can actually sell uh, back at the uh, back at the major space stations and landing zones. And so this is just a small example of you could do each one of these jobs yourself, but it would be extraordinarily slow compared to basically having a well-trained group well, of five yeah, players. Yeah. I, mean, or I mean, the idea is if you're doing it with a, a group, 
then you'll be able to be you'll be able to harvest more and yield more. And if you're doing it by yourself, it'll just take you longer because you'll kind of have to do all these aspects yourself, and that will just take some time. And if so you're doing you can, it, by you can your... do it in single player. It's just multiplayer working together as a team. You'll make more money, probably. And yeah, and and this is something that's true for a lot of the occupations, to where you can do it all yourself. It you know you can run from station to station. It will be inefficient at times. It will become incredibly dangerous to do that if you're operating the mining beam and your exothermic reaction detector spikes and it shows you oh look the the, the amount of energy that's being produced is growing exponentially even though you've completely shut Shut your, you know, shut your, uh, shut your beam off. Then what that's doing is signaling you had better get out of there very quickly. If it takes you 30 you know, seconds to basically switch over into the pilot seat, then you've got a real problem. And so, realistically, for a lot of these types of uh, group-oriented activities, um, you don't necessarily have to have, an, you know all of these roles filled by players, there are NPC crew members that you'll be able to hire. And of course, you know, the quality varies depending upon what you're willing to pay them on a monthly basis. Um, so if you wind up getting, you know, if you get a guy uh, really, really cheaply, then he may make mistakes. If you pay, a, if you get a guy that's extraordinarily skilled and you're willing to, you know, uh, you know, pay those higher wages, then he's going to wind up doing a much better job of, you know, of guiding the really valuable fragments that are ejected, you know, from the asteroid into your cargo hold. He's going, you know, the guy that's operating the refinery is going to do a much better job of actually, you know, running a large amount of ore through your refinery in the most energy and therefore economically efficient manner possible than a less skilled player or NPC would be able to do. See again. They're asking if the NPCs yes, can learn and NPCs get better. Yes, the NPCs will. Uh, the more they do stuff, uh, they'll get better. So if you get, if you have a ship and you have an NPC that's in the turret and you survive, you know, you win ten battles or twenty battles, they'll get, they'll, they will get better. They'll be like the basically the way the NPCs will run is they'll have very basic stats in the background, you know, like their morale, uh, their accuracy, um, uh, you know, those, you know. Not probably to the level you would in a, in a full RPG, but enough that we can sort of uh, rate the NPCs. I mean, we already do it for enemy pilots. Like if you're fighting, uh, say, the Vandal and Vandal Swarm, there's obviously the, the boss NPCs of a different level of, uh, of skill compared to the, the base grunt ones. And so it would be the same, that you would basically just have NPCs that if they're your crew for a while and you happen to continue to do better, well, they sort of get trained up, so to speak. And it also affect, because you can, like Tony, I think, mentioned before, you can you know, hire a crew member and they're cheap, but they may not be very good, or you can hire a more expensive crew member and they, they've obviously got higher stats. Or you can get your friend and basically, what you'll wind up having is each one of these things, and this is actually kind of a, you know, this is actually a pretty critical point that a lot of these occupations will, I, I actually call it specialization for each one of these things. So you've got somebody who is actually going to be an extraordinarily good pilot given, you know, the flight, you know, mechanics that you're going to need to employ for this particular type of job. Same thing for a refinery operator. It's not going to be flip a switch and all of a sudden your ore gets processed. You're actually going to have what, you know, what I call like a, a mini game. Basically, you're going to have a lot of uh, mechanics that you need to manipulate within the game, and some players will do that better. Some of these challenges will be primarily, uh, you know, they, they will primarily require dexterity. Other ones will primarily require intelligence. Other ones will require, you know, some combination, you know, of, of those two. Um, an another occupation that kind of like meets this criteria would be uh, pioneer. Um, there, there are a number of these occupations. Pioneer is uh, what Tony's uh, calling the explorer. Yeah, it's, it's basically a, a pioneer's purpose is to discover new objects of interest. And this actually uh, factors in with what Chris was saying earlier in regards to a pioneer would probably be the closest thing we have to, you just want to see what's out there. I don't really care to exploit it. I don't care to fight. I just want to find things. Um, and and it's, But it's interesting because it's not a one-off. It's not a disposable mission to where he just kind of you know lives off on his own. Uh, a lot of the game design is turning out to be very symbiotic in nature. And what I mean by that is a pioneer's sole purpose is finding things of interest. That might be an asteroid field. Why is that valuable? Well, because after he discovers it and it becomes common knowledge, then the people that actually want to do mining missions utilize that output of a pioneer as an input for them. They need a location. They need an asteroid field. Um, 
you know, to, 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 at which they can ply their trade. Um, a pioneer might discover a comet that would be extraordinarily useful as uh, something for a scientist to research. You can, you know, uh, one of the examples I use is uh, the movie Armageddon. You had the space shuttles uh, approaching from the backside of the uh, asteroid that was approaching Earth, and you had large fragments uh, breaking off. And so you can picture a science mission basically needing to get a a, a 30 second you know uh, video of the backside of one of these asteroids that's throwing off all these pieces um, and so the danger there is you need to be an extraordinarily you know good pilot um, another thing uh, for a, a, a pioneer would also be uh, identifying a derelict ships which would be uh, of a lot of interest to salvagers and to people that are willing to put in the time to try to repair these things get them back to port and if you can actually do that you may get a large payday um, so there's there, there's there's a lot there's a lot of attention being given to these different you know occupations within the game that while there may be a lot of danger whether that's mining or whether that's a scientist that's trying to you know get you know uh, a 30 second video from a dangerous you know look you know from a dangerous spot on a given asteroid um, a scientist that's trying to get a sample of a coronal mass ejection but in such proximity that it's actually you know uh, very dangerous or trying to get precise measurements on a micro black hole um, all these things have their own uh, dangers associated with them but they're not of the combat variety and so the, the, the real point there being is like there there will be a lot of danger both on you know on the combat oriented missions and on the non-combat and it's up to the players to basically choose you know what what they're most interested in doing that is a great segue and a great stopping point because we're out of time for this panel.